Hello, my friends, my warriors. This is Mary Mack of The Mary Mack Show. I wanted to make this video this week, especially for those who may not be prepared for hurricanes or worse. As you've seen in the reports online, at your favorite prep channel, or in the media to a certain degree, you can see the devastation that happened as a result of Hurricane Helene and also Hurricane Milton this past weekend. I want you to be aware that if you didn't have water, food, medical supplies, uh, to just be able to survive until someone came to get you or found you, you would be in a bad place. You might not have made it. Your relatives may not have made it. And so I want this video to be a warning to you, um, a, a warning of sorts that you must be prepared, okay? And today I'm gonna go through a list of different items that you should think about. And you can rewind this video as many times as you need to, to get the supplies that your family would need and have them on hand because we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And I have a very um, grave feeling that we're gonna lose our power grid. And as many of you know, I wrote a small book, a small ebook, um, as to how to help your children, teens, and the rest of your family deal with a life with no screens, no tech, no electricity. How would you go about doing that? So I'm going to pin that in the comments section below. I hope you will go and pick it up. It's all digital right now. And as soon as you do purchase it, it's just a few dollars. And it's to give you all the basic information on how you need to set yourself up and also to help your children understand what it would be like without electricity in their home if the grid did go down. And all these children, if you go anywhere, all you do is see them looking down at their phone and they will text each other across the table instead of having a conversation. Nobody talks to each other anymore. I'm sure you're aware of that if you're an adult. You know what it was like when we were kids. We would take our bicycles and go out and you know, we would come home when the lights turned on, the street lamps. That was real life. And now people um, give tablets to infants to keep them occupied. And I think that's just bizarre because these little ones, they need to be, uh, be talking to each other, uh, learning how to speak to each other, interact with other little ones. They need that. They need to read real books, okay? Because if there is no electricity, nothing on your phone will work, your internet won't work, you know, your appliances in your home won't work, you won't have a refrigerator or washer dryer or any of these things. And I talk about that in the book as to how life will drastically change. And now is the time to get that book printed off in real paper copy, so you have that should the grid go down. So now today, what I'd like to do is give you an understanding of the things that you might like to purchase immediately if your budget allows. And if it doesn't allow all these things, then I recommend you go through the list and decide which are the most important to you. Okay, mostly it's food, water, and a way to communicate. Now, if all the towers are down, if the grid is completely down, we won't have that opportunity. Elon Musk is coming out with a phenomenally uh, advanced cell phone, only a hundred dollars. Isn't that just lovely? They're not raking people over the coals with thousands and $1,500 uh, phones that will not work in the future. And he has what's called Starlink um, technology. And what that does is give you the opportunity to communicate based on the satellites 
in the sky, not the poles down the street that had those big round dishes. Those won't work. So this man has done what's best for humankind, unlike Apple, Samsung, all your local um, you know, telephone providers. Okay, so I'm grateful for that. It should be available soon for you. And I would take advantage of that because if you are in dire straits, the satellite will be able to find you and your National Guard will be able to find you. And that's just a great thing. So what I wanna go through is a list of different things that I believe are very important for you to consider uh, when you, uh, right now actually, <laughs> so that you will have the preps you need for the future, whatever it may bring. I want to thank different people whose videos I looked at that give all this information over the years. Um, Patera and James of Appalachia's Homestead. With Patera, you must go and subscribe to her channel. Go back in you know weeks and months earlier and even years earlier and she teaches you all you need on how to prepare your homestead whether you're urban or you're rural or you're suburban doesn't matter you need to know these skills okay and also uh, full spectrum survival I love listening to his channel he gives a lot of real world up-to-date information on what's going on here around the world and how it affects us Okay, I also love Jeremiah Bay. Boy, does he give good economic information. And he lets you know what's really going on in the background. And also Canadian Prepper. He's very smart uh, as far as prep is concerned. And he gives an awful lot of information as well. So shout out to all of my favorites. And I'll put those links in the description below. So let me read some of the lists that I got from other people that I follow, um, in addition to those four, because you need to know these things, okay? So one of the first things is your water supply. If you can't get a filter, or you can't um, find like a Berkey filter that we have, it's quite large, it sits on your counter. And when you fill it with tap water, regardless of whether it is pure or not, most of the time it isn't from your community, you can filter it through there and it comes out and the spigots there for you to have clean water. When we purchased that, and it was not inexpensive, I think it was over 500 back then. I have no idea what it is now, if you can even get one, but they sent this. Now this is a, it was a gift. And this goes with you in your bug out bag, okay? So what this is, it has a straw inside if you can't see it. And what this is, is, a, is its own filter. So you go out in a stream, for instance, and you fill this up and it will filter the water through and you suck it through the straw and it's clean water. These are invaluable. So you wanna see if you can get these as well. It's called Berkey filter. Let me spell it for you. B-E-R-K-E-Y. Okay. And this is important to have these for every member of your family. If you can't get a filter, I would recommend that you get as many um, gallons of water. Okay. As you can. I know everybody's getting the small bottles and they're having a case of them and that's fine, but don't throw the bottle away, refill it with water, leave it in your garage or in your storeroom or closet and just rebuild up that water for yourself after you've drank it. Okay. Cause um, we don't know how long the supply of water will be from our own community um, up in the Appalachians um, in East Tennessee and Western North Carolina, their water supply is off, completely off. They have no electricity, they have no water supply, and nobody could tell them when it was going to be back on. And that's pretty intense. 
Okay. So in addition to that, if you can get a generator of any kind, solar preferably, because those solar pa panels will go outside or on your terrace, recharge, and then you can connect them to your generator, which doesn't make a lot of noise. And that will give you a supply of electric for your, um, it might be able to generate your refrigerator, uh, regenerate the electric for your refrigerator so your food doesn't go bad. Okay, different things like that you have to think about. You know, what do I want to use that power for? Do I want the lights to be on? You know, if you put the lights on and your neighbor doesn't have lights, they'll be like, well, let's go to their house and grab whatever it is they have. So that's really important to not necessarily uh, want to, you know, shout from the rooftops, hey, we've got things here. You don't want to do that. So you might want to use flashlights and candles when nighttime comes, all right? So also something really simple, a manual can opener. <laughs> Isn't that funny? We don't think about that often, but we need that, okay? We need that because electric obviously won't be here for us. And if we have to get into our food, we need that. And most of us don't even have that. Also, a solar powered radio. Now this is important. You can go to like a Home Depot or Lowe's and it's a little box about this big. And on the top, it has a solar panel and it also has a crank and you can crank that so that it becomes um, filled with power and you can listen, you can just dial the dial and see where you can get some information. Now, as we all know, we don't know if that information is from government, local government, we don't know where it's coming from, but at least it keeps us in touch with somebody and hopefully we can, um, you know, listen and find out what's going on, okay? The next thing too is you need community. Now that could be the people on your block that you really trust, um, you might decide that you want to get together with a, a, a few different uh, families and be together and work together, work your land together, or um, be uh, available to each other in uh, a walking distance so that things will flow a little bit more smoothly. Plus two, there are times where you won't have certain things you need and they will, and you can barter with them for certain items that you may have. So the other thing I wanna talk about are, oh, I know, before I go further. Now, this is something we bought many of, okay? I don't know if you could read this. It's the Patriot Power Cell. Now, what is this? This is a solar cell, okay? And what happens is you put this in the sun and over here, I don't know if you can see the little blue lights on the top, there's a little bit of power left in it. And you want this to be charged up and then it comes with this little cord that you plug from here to your cell phone and your cell will charge up and then you put this back in the sun, okay? And that will at least give you the opportunity to communicate with your family and friends. Now, when you do that, and I don't know who's ever lived through a hurricane before, but I've lived through many. And what you want to remember is when you charge your phone before a hurricane hits, when your electric is completely out, before the hurricane started, you wanna make a list, one group on your cell. So it's you know all your relatives, your closest friends, the people you want to know that you're okay, right? And on that, that grouping, that, I forget what they call it, but you know what I mean. You could put like 10 people, you know, your most important people, maybe more, and this way, when you send one text, it goes out to everybody. And so the most important thing is that you open up your phone that's now charged, 
you just send one small text, we're okay, right? And you look to see if anybody else has also said they're okay. And once you know everybody's good, you shut, you just say, I'm shutting off, I'm signing off. And then you shut off your, your, your phone completely. You don't leave it on. You shut it off completely so it recharges the battery. It stays, you know, with electric there, with power. And that's how you do it when you have a hurricane and no power. You don't get on the phone and talk to people. You don't play games on your social media. You don't play games <laughs> on your phone or tablet. You don't do any of that. You just send out, it's almost like an SOS, right? And you want people to know you're okay. That's all you have to do. That's it. Everything else should be shut down. Okay. So we bought many of these and I'm glad we did because the power went out not too long ago. I think there was a transformer that blew during rainstorm and this was perfect. And we were able to just turn ourselves back on from here. And by the way, this one comes with a little keychain effect you can put on your belt or on your uh, you know, backpack. So that's good. I'm really glad we got that. David was smart to find them and to figure it out. Well, thank you, David. Now, the other thing I want you to know about besides that type of thing, is you wanna look into sleeping bags and tarps, especially tarps, because if something happens to your roof and, the, and everything falls, the, um, the tiles fall off um, or the panels, whatever you have as your roof, you can take these huge blue tarps and put it all over the roof so that you won't get any more rain inside your home, okay? really important. They're also great for just putting in your garage on the floor and stockpiling your things, okay? Uh, having everything ready and if you have to evacuate, you have everything right there to make an exit, okay? And by the way, if somebody tells you to evacuate, don't be stupid, just go, just go, okay? Now, what do you take with you? Okay, this is my go-to theory. You look around your house and you say to yourself, what could I not find again? What could I not buy again? What are things in my possession that mean the most to me that I could never replace? What would some of those things be? Your treasured jewelry, not costume crap. I'm talking real good jewelry, your treasured jewelry. If you were fortunate enough to buy gold and silver, and I certainly hope you did, you can go to Jeremiah Babe and go to use his link if you like at SD Bullion. That's who we use. It's amazing. They are phenomenal people. Phenomenal. It goes so quick. It's just, it's just so easy. So I'm very grateful that we went through that. Then um, you want, what else is very important to you? Well, first of all, if you have pictures that you know you can't replace, what I've done is I took out all my pictures and I took pictures of pictures to have them in my camera. But I don't know if I'll be able to get them out of the camera at some point. So I'm just saying to you, make sure you bring the pictures that mean the most to you. You might have to take them out of the frames, but those are things you can't replace. What else can't you replace? You have to think to yourself like that. I remember when I was packing my one box, okay? I remember that I had my grandmother's, grandmother's bluebird drinking glasses, stemware. They're wine glasses. I can't even imagine how long ago that is, obviously in the 1800s. And I thought to myself, I'll never be able to replace those. And so I put them all up in bubble wrap and I put them in my can't do without box. <laughs> and 
there's a lot of things that I couldn't do without. I would never be able to replace. So do think about that. When you are going, I want you to go into every single room and think to yourself, do I really need to have this? Okay, I don't need those fancy shoes. If I have to walk across, you know, valleys, if I have to walk thousands, excuse me, not thousands, but if I had to walk tens of miles, those pretty little shoes aren't going to help me. So do I have Merrell's? Do I have, you know, really good uh, tennis shoes? Those are what I need. Do I have socks? Do I have jeans? Okay. Do I have shorts and t-shirts? These are the things you're going to need if you had to walk somewhere, get somewhere right away. Okay. So go through that whole pattern. What would I need if I had to walk somewhere? What if I, you know, I just had to show up somewhere. I wouldn't know what people would have there. Do I have pillow? Do I have blankets? Do I have, um, what else? Work gloves. Do I have work gloves if I had to move things, if I had to move um, debris in the area, okay? What if my trees came down? How do I move them? You need work gloves, many pairs of them. You have socks. What about fans? If you did have some electricity, you'd need fans, manual fans to keep you cool, especially in the hot weather. Okay. What else? Medical kit. You need a medical kit. We got a few of them from Sam's Club. And they're pretty big about this. They don't contain a ton of things. It's mostly bandages and band-aids and that kind of stuff. Little packets of aspirin you know, that kind of thing. But at least it's something and it's somewhere to start. And once you get it, you can determine for your own needs if you need more, okay? More things that that aren't on there, okay? So what else? Vitamins, oh my God. Think to yourself what vitamins you would need. Some of the most powerful ones you need are vitamin C and a high potency, like a thousand milligrams. And try to get effort C because they are, um, that won't bother your stomach. Okay. And you can either get it in a granule form to mix with water, or you can get the, you know, the capsules. Try to get the capsules. Try not to buy vitamins that are hard pills. They'll, they will not help you. You will just, it will just go through your system and it will not help you. So please try to get the capsules, okay? Try to get a multivitamin as well um, for everybody in your family. That's very important to have a multivitamin and at least to see. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not any of those things. I'm just telling you that this is what we did. So we knew for sure that we would have that on hand. The other thing that I always buy is called moringa. Okay, hold on, I'll show you. Now this is what I've bought for a long time. Can you see it? Moringa. And I happen to get it from this place. It's called Fresh Healthcare, I think it is, down in Florida. And they send it very quickly. So that's really good. I also get from them, I get turmeric. Can you see that? Turmeric. Why do you want turmeric? Because turmeric helps you with joints and, you know, if you're stiff, if you're having a hard time walking, it really helps you um, in that regard. It helps your stomach too. And so those are two of the things that I really, I really love. Okay. So, and as I said, I'm not a doctor. This is what I get for myself. Now, there's other two things I want to show you. Now, this one, it's a colloidal silver. And people say, what is that? I'm like, all I know is, is that this or this brand 
now silver soul or colloidal silver. This is called sovereign silver. They both do the same thing. It's just that in certain parts of the world, you can't get this one, but you might be able to get this one. Okay. And what you do is you just open it up, right? And it's liquid and you drop a little bit of it, maybe like a half teaspoon worth. You never put it on a metal spoon. You take that and you put it under your tongue and you let it slowly dissipate. Okay. Sublingually. And after about five minutes or so, sometimes I let it go longer. I'll just swallow it. And that's all. Now, when do I use those? If I'm in a large crowd, when I come home, I absolutely take that. I don't know what germs were flying around there, especially when we fly. We take it before we fly and we take it when we get back from flying. Okay. So this comes, it's, this is only about two ounces yeah, this is two ounce bottle. So you'll never have a problem with it. I put it in my knapsack. Um, I never travel underneath because I want to have those special things I need to protect me. And I take that, as I said, when I'm in large crowds. Okay. Now, the other thing I use, this is called Box Rescue Remedy. It's for stress relief. I've been using this for decades. What makes this so special? is that if you're having a really hard time, if you're, um, you're afraid, if you have a lot of stress, if you don't know how things are going to move forward, if you're trying to just keep it together, I use this. Okay. So this little yellow box is where it's weight in gold. This is what it looks like. Just a little bottle. And you twist off the top, which sometimes I have trouble with. Okay, there we go. And you just, here's like a little dropper. And you just push the top and you see the liquid in there. And you take that same way as with the colloidal silver and you put it under your tongue and on your tongue. And you just wait a little while, five, 10 minutes, I leave it on. And I'm telling you, if after you take that, you just lay down for just a little baby nap, just let it work its magic. And you'll see, after a little while, you'll start to feel more strength, more emotional strength. And whatever you have to do to build your emotional strength to get through all, this pro all these problems is what you need to do, okay? So those are my favorite things, my favorite go-to things when you're having a hard time. Now, let me talk about Oh, okay. Another thing. Batteries. <laughs> you have to have batteries and candles and flashlights and the batteries for those flashlights. Okay. There are some excellent flashlights that are just for this small area. And then there's some for a very wide area. And you have to determine which ones you want because you don't want to alert the neighbors that you have all these things. You don't want them coming looking for you. Okay. You have to have a really low profile if things go south. Okay. So now I'd like to start talking about some things in the way of food. Okay, first of all, you want all the water you can get. Okay, if you have all big, large, you know, like um, bottles from the store, water bottles from the store, whether small or large, you want to refill them to the point that you can't get water anymore. So now you have a whole bunch of it. I remember at one of my houses, I used to, in Florida, uh, I would take old water bottles we'd buy, right? And after we finished drinking it, I would refill it from the sink and line up the whole edge of my garage. So I knew that I had water, uh, whether to flush the toilets with, because that's a big thing. If the water doesn't come into your home, you need to flush the toilets. And so before the hurricane came, we'd fill up the, um, the tubs, okay? And we'd put a small pot next to the, the, um, the sink or next to the tub. And this way we could wash our hands, we could flush the toilets, and that little pot really came in handy. Dig out the water out of, this, out of the tub and do what we needed to do. 
because water was so rare at that point for a while. I remember hurricanes we had back in 2004 in Florida. There were three that came, one, two, three, after each other. And the last one came in August. And that really, I think it was the second or the last one came in August. Oh my God, that was a doozy. We didn't have power for over three weeks. And it was such a hot summer. And you didn't know whether to keep the windows open or closed. It seemed like it was just as humid, just as hot either way. But the one thing I remember is that all the food in the refrigerator, even though we kept the, you know, the doors closed, all the freezer, all the refrigerator, that food all spoiled. It was terrible. And the one thing that was very generous was uh, in our state, you were able to go to, we have a big, in Orange County and we're in Orlando area, we have a big, um, I don't even know what you call it, not a coliseum, but, you know, a big arena. And we were able to go down there and fill out all kinds of forms and tell them how much money we lost in the way of food or if we our homes were harmed, um, that kind of thing. And it took a little while, but we got reimbursed for very much of it. And I was so grateful to the administration back then for doing that for us. It wasn't a FEMA thing. It was a Florida thing. So we were really grateful. Okay. So food I want you to consider. First of all, you need rice and a lot of it. Now, if you buy regular rice, it takes a long time to cook that. But I found that if you get jasmine rice, um, that cooks fast, you know, like 15, 20 minutes max. When I get regular brown rice, it takes almost an hour to cook that. So you might consider getting bags of jasmine rice and testing it. Get small bags of different kinds of rice and see how long it takes. And you have to do it now. Don't wait until you're up against the gun. Go find out all these things. OK, and if you have like a Coleman stove or something where you could cook outside, that's wonderful. If you can get the tools that campers use, you need to get that for yourself. Now, if you're in a wooded area and you can get wood, oh, my God, that'd be even better. But for people who are in the cities, I want you to be aware everybody's gonna be running to the grocery store at the same time if anything um, catastrophic happens, if the grid goes down in your city. So I want you to think about, should I be leaving? Should I be going somewhere else? Oh, my, is, do I have family that's in another area? Can I work remotely? Maybe you can move a few towns or a few cities away, or maybe even a few states away, where you can do your work, you know, remotely, and you can still make a living, and you can still help the family who you would go and live with. So think about that. Could you get a job in that area now, so that you can move and make some money to support the family you're going to live with? I know it's not easy to be with three generations of people. I remember in the 1950s and 40s, after the war, it was very hard for people coming back, you know, a GIs coming back from the war, World War II. There weren't enough uh, housing for them. And especially since they wanted to be married and start a family. And so a lot of them lived with their families, their parents. And there are times there were three generations in one family, sometimes more. And so I remember my paternal grandparents took my parents in. And then here I am on the third generation in that household. So for the first several years of my life, till I was, I think, five, I lived with my grandparents in their home. And I have seen pictures of me, my pretty little dresses running around. It was nice. I bonded a great, I just bonded so greatly with my paternal grandparents. And I loved them so much. And I miss them because they helped me through um, most of my life. Whenever I had an issue, there's a lot of times I go back for their wisdom. So think about that. 
I know it will be easy to have three generations living in one house, especially if there's no tech and nobody knows what to do with themselves. But if you pick up my book, my little book, the link will be in the pinned comments. Go grab that. And when you get it, you download it into your computer, but more so, I want you to print it out. Even if you have to put it on a little thumbnail, a thumbstick and go to, you know, someplace where you can go print that out. And this way you'll have it and you can start going through it and find out how you're going to adjust. Have a family meeting. Sit down and talk to them about what I wrote and how they could adjust. It's not going to be pretty. I wish I could say that it was going to be better for us, but unfortunately, I think it's even going to be worse. So would you please do that? Do that for your family. It's not costly at all. And I made it very inexpensive so everyone can have that and learn from it and talk to their family about it. Very important. Okay, let's go through some food items that you have to consider besides rice. Pasta, big time, okay? Don't buy the big pasta. In other words, don't buy rigatoni. This is very thick and very fat and takes a long time to cook. Don't buy shells, same thing. Don't buy monogot. You're not going to be baking anything because you don't have oven use. You can't use your oven. Instead, buy angel hair pasta. It's like spaghetti, only thinner. Buy spaghetti. Linguine is okay, but it's even thicker, so it takes longer to cook. So what I buy is I buy, um, if you can get it, I buy, um, I buy like spaghetti or angel hair pasta. Okay, and it cooks up very quickly and it's good for you and it'll, it'll go a long way. So you could stockpile up on that and it'll be there for you. If you have little ones, you might buy orzo. They're just little tiny itsy bitsy things <laughs> or pastina. Those are also pasta and they cook up. They're so tiny, you know, they're smaller than um, the pinpoint <laughs> of a, of a um, pencil. That's how tiny they are. But they're really great for your little ones, especially your, your babies, okay? If you can't get formula, you might be able to use that. Talk to your doctor on that. Okay, you'd need flour. If you're not gluten intolerant, get flour. You can actually learn how to make bread on your stove with a, with a regular frying pan, okay? There are videos out there that teach you how to make bread with just a little oil and some yeast. You roll it all around, you make these um, little breads, round breads. You can make four of them in your pan, you cover it and you have bread. And it's, they say it's very good. So there's all different ways to get around things when you don't have an oven to make bread. Okay, you're gonna be thinking to yourself, how can I do this with a frying pan on an open flame? Because that's all you might have. Okay, you wanna get canned meats that you can afford. For instance, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, you might, you might wanna get canned meats like chicken and tuna. And even sardines are really great, okay? Sardines are great because you, you just pop them open and you can eat them right there, okay? You want, and the tuna and the chicken as well, right? Um, you want canned fruit of all kinds. You wanna get the ones with the pop, the pop lids. Many come with pop lids now, so you're lucky, but you still want your manual can opener because you never know. You wanna get peanut butter and a lot of it. But just watch um, for the, the uh, expiration date because we had ours for so long, we couldn't believe that it would be expiring in a very short period of time. So we shared it with the local, um, the local choke, hope chest, you know, so it wouldn't go bad. You definitely want sugar, 
Okay. You want to give your kids a treat or bake them a little something on the stove. Maybe you can use bread and, excuse me, you could use flour and sugar, yeast and oil, and add some cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder that you bake with um, and make them a treat, a small little chocolate cake. You can also use um, corn-based cornmeal. You can make some uh, corn muffins, you know, a cornbread. That's very good too. You want coffee, instant coffee and teas, all kinds of teas that you might like, especially canned beans, because you're going to want to move, move that with the, <laughs> you're going to um, use that with the rice, okay? And rice and beans can sustain you for a very long time. And if you're fortunate enough to have some meats, you just put a little meats in there. I can tell you one of our favorite dishes we made during COVID, um, we had an Instapot. And so we made rice and beans in the Instapot and we put in like one or two legs or thighs in it. And then when it came out, we added lime juice, fresh lime on it. Oh my God, that was one of our favorite meals. We couldn't believe how much came from just that little bit of rice and that little bit of beans and the small, small amount of chicken. And it was a very satisfying meal. So the, the favorite of ours was the lime, which gave it a zing. And uh, we still love that to this day. So you want canned vegetables. Okay, all kinds of canned vegetables that you could throw in with the rice, throw in with the chicken. Okay, it is substantial and the beans give you the protein, the rice gives you the starch and, and we need that, we will need that. If you have a young family, you want, might wanna have powdered milk on hand so that you can give them milk if they need it. Um, and you have to find out if how old a baby needs to be or a young one needs to be to give that kind of powdered milk to. You might also like to look at what spices do you enjoy? And that's important because this way, it, think life won't get boring with the rice. You can mix all different types of um, spices. One of my favorite is oregano. Oregano is also very medicinal. It helps you if your immune system is lower, okay? But look at what spices work for you and make sure you get a few of them, especially salt and pepper, to spice up what you have. Then I want you to think about your baby's needs, it, the formula, the wipes, the cloths, all the things that a young one needs, diapers, Oh my goodness, there's a lot for the little ones, right? And even for your older folks, um, do they need incontinent diapers? You have to think about those things, okay? You might have them at home. There might not be any um, nursing homes available anymore. So think about that, okay? What they need. Then you want so and shampoo, toothpaste, all those types of things. What do you usually use, okay? You need dishwasher detergent if it's working, or you need just liquid detergent to wash your, your kitchen, kitchen things, okay? Your dishes. Can you get paper dishes? Can you get paper cups? How about the cutlery you need? I remember getting all those things because if you can't, if you don't have the water to even wash your own body, you won't have the water to worry about washing dishes. So if you can get paper products, especially at the dollar store, go look for them. Okay. I've been learning that in the Dollar General, um, they have a section that's only a dollar. So go look at that and see. Um, Patera did a video on that recently. And that's very important because the regular dollar store isn't a dollar store anymore. It's a dollar 25 or up. Okay, so they decided they wanted a 25% increase. Not nice. So go into Dollar General and see what they have 
and um, you might be able to get quite a few things, especially cleaning products that you might need just to keep everything sanitary, sanitary as you can. You know, you need sponges and mops and, and brooms. You need um, cloths to wash, you know, wash down parts of your home that may have gotten filthy in rainstorms. Okay, so I think I've gone through almost everything I wanted to say. <laughs> so, yep, I've gone through my little thing here. I've gone through this. Okay, we're good. <laughs> so I just want to tell you that I love you. I want you to make sure that you're safe as possible. Link up with other people who believe as you believe in the, in the community. And most of all, don't you dare go without voting. Because if we're going to make a better country, we need change. Big time change. And if that offends some of you, I can't help it. You're going to have to reassess what's going on with this election. You're going to have to take the time to watch these other videos out there on YouTube. Because the media is not going to tell you what's really going on. They never have and they never will. They have their own agenda. You know they do. So just watch online, listen to experts who have huge YouTube channels that talk about this type of thing. Stephen Gardner, okay? He brings things to light. And there are others. And I want you to make, I want to make sure that you are awake that you're awake to what's really going on. Don't just automatically go into the booth and click all the ones or circle all the ones in the same party. Have you investigated them? Do you know who they are? Are you happy with their policies? What have they done for you? Really, what have they done for you? They talk a good story, but what did they do for you? That's up to you to look at. That's up to you to look at. Don't bury your head in the sand because you're going to be very, very sad if you do. Those hurricanes that came through to the Carolinas and Tennessee, especially, and all up that valley, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Eastern Alabama, Virginia. Did I say Georgia? I'm not sure. Eastern Alabama, yeah. Virginia, but mostly East Tennessee and Western North Carolina. When that storm came into that valley, it just hung out. It just kept circling and circling and circling. And that's why there were people whose houses, their whole houses just uprooted off the land and washed down the valley in the river. Can you imagine going through that? I want you to think about that. How are they being helped? Who's helping them? Is it their local people? Mm -hmm. People who knew where to go, where to find all these people in the different surrounding communities. They knew where to go. And they were up and out there immediately. But certain governments weren't. You have to look into that. And the reason you have to look into that is because think about it. If that was you, if that was you, how would you feel? How would you feel? Mm -hmm. I watched a video of a niece who was talking about her uncle whose house was demolished in Hurricane Milton, or was it Helene? I think Helene. And FEMA came in and assessed the damages and let him know that his house was only worth $2,600, okay? Billions spent on illegals, billions spent on wars. Billions, hundreds of billions of dollars spent on other countries and illegals. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? 
Think about it. Learn about it. Learn about it. Why is it that certain states allow illegals to vote in this election? Would that be okay with you? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it, do it doesn't bother you. But I believe, and many, many people in this country believe, that our country should be sovereign. The only people who should be voting are citizens. Think about it. I saw a beautiful meme. I'm going to try to find it and I'll put it in the community section. You have to show an ID, right? If you cash a check, if you go to the bank, if you go to the pharmacy to pick up uh, your prescription, you have to show when you go to the airport, you have to prove who you are. When you go on a flight, do you not? You have to prove who you are for any kind of medical any kind of medical procedure, you have to go to the a hospital, you have to show up with an ID to say who you are. Do you not? Because they want their money. If you're going to enroll your kids in school, you have to show an ID. If you want to go um, learn how to drive, you have to prove that you're a citizen. Maybe not so much anymore, but it was once that way. Where else do you have to show that you're a citizen? Prove with ID. Think about that. But all of those things you have to do when it comes to voting, ah, eh, it says nah. We don't have to show we, who we are when we vote. And I think that personally is not only irresponsible, but politically motivated. Why don't you have to prove who you are when you vote? Think about it. Why don't you? That's one of my big beefs. Okay, Mary. <laughs> so thank you for listening in. Remember to re-watch this, this video many times so you can go through, write down what I've said on all the things you need to know. Okay? And you don't have to just get it from me. I want you to go to all the uh, friends I put beneath me, all the links and the channels I'll put in the description for you to go over there and start watching them. I want your eyes to be opened. It's really important. This isn't a game anymore. It was nice to think, oh, we'll just prep and everything will be fine. Well, it isn't. And unfortunately, those people who are caught up in these hurricanes, anything that they spent money on for very many years, their preps were washed down the river with their home, never to get back again. All that money that they did. Now you may say, well, that's a good reason why I shouldn't do that. Absolutely not. You still need to do that. If all you get is food, water, and a way to communicate in that solar power, that solar power cell, okay? If all you get is this little guy. So when you, see, see the top, how it's, it's coming on? Because it's in the light. That's what it looks like. This will help you to communicate with your family that you're well or in distress. And you have food and water, toilet paper, paper towels, the most basic necessities of life. Do you have them already? I certainly hope so. And if you don't, get to the store and go get them. You don't have to go out drinking. You don't have to go out having a meal. Okay, you don't need that fancy designer bag. You don't need, um, what else? Oh, to put fancy eyelashes on your eyes because none of that's gonna matter. None of it will matter. Mm -mm. You don't need extra makeup. Think about it. You need one blush, one shadow, right? A mascara, some lipstick. And cream or one foundation. That's all you need. 
you may think you need all these other products so that your eyes look so pretty with all the different shades. Really? Nobody's going to give a shit if you can't feed yourself or if you're in the middle of a tornado or if you're in the middle of a hurricane. You have to start thinking like this. Okay? I know you don't want to. It's really sad. It's depressing. But you have to think to yourself, do I have glasses that work? Is the prescription up to date? Okay? Do I have the medicines I need? Do my family, does my family have the medicines they need? You have to get that now. That's more important than all the designer hair pieces, okay? Really. Right now, I'm fortunate to have a beautiful manicure, okay? But there'll come a time where that will all go on the wayside. And I remember during COVID, my hair got gray for about this much. And David's beard looked like Santa Claus. <laughs> it was crazy. Do you remember those times? Do you remember when you couldn't go to a salon to have your hair dyed? If all hell breaks loose, we'll be back to that. Yes, we will. So until then, I am fortunate enough to still have brown hair. <laughs> I love you. I want the best for you. I want you to get your head out of the sand, just like flamingos. And I want you to do what's necessary to take care of yourself, okay? Listen to my other friends whose channels are very informative and go on YouTube and start looking around for information, economic information, buying gold and silver. That's what we have. It's important. I'm not interested in someone just confiscating everything in my bank account. Are you? You worked real hard. What about your 401k? Have you moved it into cash? Have you taken it out if you can? Or is it still sitting in mutual funds that somebody else controls because you're getting an awful lot of money and fees for doing it, but it isn't helping you? Okay, I think it should stop. I've kind of gone all over the, the uh, <laughs> all over this uh, spectrum. Watch over yourself. And you know, I want you to be close to God. Just like Jeremiah Babe says, I have videos on how to pray in uncertain times. That's important, very important. My last video, although it was short, was that what would happen if you died today? Interesting, huh? Are you prepared to die? Oh no, Mary, I can't talk about that. That's too scary. Really? I'm sure those people in East Tennessee and Western North Carolina, they aren't thinking about that either. But unfortunately, their hardship gives us a waking call. A waking call. I love you. Be close to God. Pray. Listen to his small voice. And as always, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You'll also see my video on Psalm 91 to protect you. So go look at those, and I will see you again soon. Love you. Talk to you soon.